We all work for our money. And most of us will say that we work hard for our money. For you, it could be 40 hours a week. For someone else, it might be 60 hours a week. But this is time you spend away from your family, your friends. Time away from what matters most to you. And if you're anything like me, you're doing all this and you're not getting as much sleep as you should. For most of us, this is all in vain. While all this is going on in the background, there's two big threats to your money. The first one is something that you hear complained about every day gas prices, the cost of groceries. The fact that the cost of everything just keeps going up and up despite the fact that your pay is pretty much staying the same. What I'm talking about is inflation. But the crazy thing is that's not even the biggest threat to your money. You are. With the decisions you make every day, every month, every year, you either create your own inflation or you improve your financial situation. There's no in between. But most of us decide to make a mistake, a big one lifestyle creep, where we unknowingly create our own inflation that outpaces regular inflation by a lot. I've done this before and I've done it even after I thought I learned my lesson. Most of us have no idea we're doing this, much less how to avoid it. That's where I come in. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money, make more money and better yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms and most importantly, build wealth. Let's get into this video. The first step to avoiding lifestyle creep and living a good frugal lifestyle where you actually hold on to some money is by understanding this one thing. The amount of money you make does not matter. Have you ever had a friend that you know for a fact makes a lot more money than you, but every time you're around them they complain about their finances? How they're broke or how their bills are too high? On the flip side, have you ever had friends that make less than you, maybe significantly less, but it always seems like they're able to do what they want to do? They never complain about their finances and they seem like they have the ability to travel and just live a carefree life. We all have that friend. That's what I'm saying. The amount of money you make doesn't matter if you keep upgrading your lifestyle to match your expenses just because you can afford it. So it's best to keep this mindset right here. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm about to go old school. If there's nothing wrong with where you live, if there's nothing wrong with the car you drive or your cell phone, your laptop or anything of that nature, there's no reason to upgrade it. Don't adopt the same mindset you hear everyone else saying, the now I can mindset. The now I can prove everybody wrong that was sleeping on me that didn't think I had it like that. I'ma show them. Now I can get a bigger apartment. Now I can buy a BMW. Now I can buy an 80 inch TV and mount it on my wall. Ain't nothing wrong with the TV you got. So what's the real reason for this? I had the same mentality just a few short years ago myself, but I had to realize if I don't have certain things right now, I don't need them. And there's absolutely no rush for me to go out there and get extra things or upgrade what I already have simply because I make more money. And here's another thing. When we're making those decisions, we're forgetting about one thing. We're forgetting about the threat to our money that we find ourselves complaining about the most, inflation. Now let's do some math right quick. This is that fun math, so don't worry. Now let's say you go from making $50,000 a year to $52,500 a year. That's a 5% raise right there at work. So that's basically an extra $200 a month or an extra $100 per paycheck that you're bringing in now. That might not seem like that much, but that feeling of euphoria you get when you know that you have the extra money coming in every month will have you feeling like you have the extra buying power. And it will have you thinking about things that you shouldn't. It'll have you out here thinking about what you can buy and what you can do while you forget about the inflation that's creeping up on you. Back to the math. Inflation is usually 4%. It can go higher than that, but for the sake of this example, we'll say that inflation stays at 4%. So in this case, your raise basically just made up for inflation. So all this extra spending you do based on this extra $200 a month you get actually puts you in a position where you're holding on to less money than you were when you were getting paid less. And this extra spending could come in the form of you taking the family out to eat two times more a month than usual. Or taking on a car note that's $100 more a month than your current one is. Or getting a nicer apartment that costs $170 more. That's taking something that ain't broken and you're fixing it. That is making you broke. You see what I'm saying? So now we back ourselves in the corners or even situations that we can't easily get ourselves out of. But there's actually two ways you can improve your situation until you eventually get out of it. One is making adjustments to your lifestyle if you're not where you want to be. That means you have to either lower your expenses or increase your income, or both. The easier thing to do is to lower your expenses, and that's by delaying gratification. 
I've said this before, but I don't say it very often. Delaying gratification doesn't have to be some painful, grueling experience that you put yourself through by depriving yourself of all things enjoyable like I did. It's as simple as identifying the top three things you spend money on besides your necessities. Once you identify those three things, simply cut back or don't buy them at all. Coffee probably isn't part of your top three. So I'm not about to be up here sounding like one of those articles online talking about some, yeah, cut back on coffee. That's going to save you all kinds of money. Or take this survey. This is how you increase your income right here. Nah, that ain't how you do it. My biggest three expenses outside of my necessities were food, shoes slash clothes, and entertainment in that order. And by food, I mean eating out. I easily spent over $400 a month on eating out alone. So just cutting back on that one expense by itself pretty much doubled the amount of money I was able to save every month. So imagine if you can cut back on all three. Imagine how much money you'll be able to keep. By the way, let me know in the comments what your top three expenses are because these all contribute to your lifestyle creep. Another way to cut your expenses, and this is a little extreme, you can either move to a place that's cheaper to live in or you can get roommates and that'll cut your rent into a fraction. That's uncomfortable though and a lot of people aren't willing to do that. There's also the option of buying a modest, safe, reliable economy car in cash instead of getting the newest car you can afford off the lot with all the fancy bells and whistles on it. That'll save you thousands of dollars a year right there, but that's not sexy though. These may not sound like ideal solutions to you, but you've got to ask yourself this question. Which one is more ideal, your financial situation right now or the sacrifices you need to make right now in order to get your finances to where you want them to be in the future? I'm only focused on how to minimize the big expenses in this video, so that advice right there can help you out a lot. But on the other hand, you can increase your income so you can keep your lifestyle that you have without filling it in your pockets. This is going to require more from you up front, but the easy way to do it is to work overtime at your job if it's available to you. The key is this, if you do decide to work overtime, you should keep these two things in mind. One, pace yourself so you don't burn out, and two, keep your expenses the same so you don't fall for the same trap twice. Another easy way is to start a side hustle that anyone can do, such as painting houses, cutting grass for your neighbors, really any kind of yard work because it's something that has to be done, but no one wants to do it. Those are just a few simple side hustles that I thought of off the top of my head that can bring in an extra $100 a week for you, which can definitely offset your lifestyle creep and inflation. But if you want more ideas and you want to learn more about how I increase my income, head over to my side hustle videos. I made an entire series about various ways to make extra money. I'll link it up here. As you can see, doing one or the other can 100% help you avoid lifestyle creep or at least recover from it. And I'm not just speaking in theory either, like I actually applied this to my life for years. And when I made the mistake of giving in to lifestyle creep at the ripe age of 21, I had to recognize it and make adjustments. I was acting like I was too good to get a single bedroom apartment. So I went and got something double the size with an upstairs and a downstairs. And ironically, it cost me almost $200 more than a single bedroom would. Once I recognized that, I did overtime at work and I created my own side hustle, which brought in another $200 a month for me for the side hustle. So between the overtime at work and the side hustle, I was bringing in an extra $1,200 a month. And yes, while I was doing all this, I also cut back on my top three expenses. I'll be completely honest though. I don't do roommates. And I was definitely not about to move out of my townhouse because I like the lifestyle too much. And if that sounds like you, that's cool. Just remember though, if you do want to avoid lifestyle creep, you have to put in work in other ways, just like I had to. Now, there's something about inflation that a lot of people don't think about. It works in percentages. So another mistake you can make is putting all of your money in a place that doesn't give you percentages that equal or surpass inflation. I used to keep every dollar to my name in my savings account and I would get like $1 of interest for every $1,000 I was able to save. What kind of percentage is that? That's like not even a whole number. That's like 0.1% compared to inflation being at 4%. I don't know about you, but I don't like that comparison. With that said, I recommend you putting your money in safe places that actually outpace inflation, like exchange traded funds such as VOO or VTI or index funds. If this sounds like another language to you, check out my investing videos. They only got about two views, but they give you very valuable information on how to grow your money and combat inflation. And making the decision to put your money in these types of investments as opposed to expenses like food, shoes, clothes, or entertainment, the investments are going to reward you in the future. Because everything I just mentioned tends to grow between 10 to 12% per year on average compared to inflation's 4%. This is what frugal living actually looks like. 
Making the right decisions today so you can get the future you deserve and desire. And most importantly, it prevents the financial heartache and the constant overworking yourself to make ends meet for a prolonged amount of time. I'm talking 20, 30 years. Just to keep up the lifestyle you're living all for your own comfort, or worse yet, to impress others. So once you've gotten to a place where you've avoided lifestyle creep, do yourself a favor and continue to live frugally. I have a ton of frugal living videos out there on this channel and I think they can help you out a lot. No more working so many hours a week with barely anything to show for it. No more upgrading your expenses just because you're getting paid more. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.